What's up guys, today's video is on the top five best running shoes in 2024. Through extensive research and testing, I've put together a list of options that'll meet the need of different types of buyers. So whether it's price performance or its particular use, we've got you covered for more information on the product I've included links in the description box down below, which are updated for the best prices like the video comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get started. Number five, Hoka One One Clifton Nine. Best running shoes for recovery runs. The originator of maximum cushioning movement, the Clifton $945 is the latest in Hoka's flagship running shoe. The catch-22 of a brand's cornerstone product is that each year it has to evolve while always remaining recognizable. Hoka mastered the new yet familiar tightrope with the latest Clifton. The Clifton 9 is lighter than its predecessor yet adds 3mm in stack height. This is due to a variety of factors, Nibble, the biggest being a new type of foam used in the midsole and a redesigned outsole. The upper also got a makeover with a plusher heel and streamlined tongue. The result is a show that leans into the max cushioning, swallowtail design Hoka has long pioneered, lighter and more responsive than the previous version. The Clifton 9 performs ideally on recovery runs, but still has the capacity to move with some speed when necessary. Hoka cushioning provides relief, especially on high mileage weeks, and the redesigned knit upper adds more comfort to an already comfortable shoe. Number four, Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. Carbon fiber shoes are great and all, but wow, are they pricey. If the thought of dropping $225 plus for a pair of running shoes makes you cringe, this Saucony Speedster is for you. Priced more in line with premium everyday trainers than carbon fiber shoes, the Endorphin Speed $3170 features a more flexible nylon plate that spans the full length. It's a bit more forgiving than stiffer carbon fiber shoes, making it more versatile and suitable for a broader audience. There have been a few updates for the third iteration that make it a slightly smoother ride. It still features a generous dose of Saucony's high-energy Taipu Purin PB midsole, the ride is certainly playful and fast, and that fun feeling isn't reserved for fast paces. Even when we were clipping away at more moderate paces, we found the ride smooth. A fully redesigned, engineered mono mesh gives it better breathability and lockdown. We crowned it the best for speed training, and it certainly is, but it's just as capable as an everyday trainer. If you're looking for a fun, high-performance shoe with some bounce, but aren't willing to shell out the dough for pricey carbon fiber shoes, here you have it. Number three. On running cloud surfer, on shoes are everywhere these days. Favored by the athleisure set, you're as likely to see the signature pod-like outsoles at your coffee shop as your running path. There's no denying they look cool. Well, but do they run fine on built the cloud surfer? $160 as a maximum cushion shoe using the brand's CloudTech phase technology. That's a lot of techs and a lot of clouds in one sentence. But the idea behind the terminology is that the space in the outsole, i.e., the clouds, collapses with your foot strike. In theory, this delivers enhanced cushioning and a smoother, more efficient transfer from heel to toe. Her tester found that this resulted in a shoe that cushioned well, but felt firmer than other maximally cushioning shoes like the Hoka Clifton. The foot feels cradled, but less speed is sacrificed. Another factor here is the rocking design of the outsole. While the Cloud Surfer is billed as a neutral fit, the outsole is candid at the heel. This design enhances the rocker feel of the shoe, moving the foot from heel to toe with extra efficiency. The Cloud Surfer's heel to toe rock and the nature of the compressing outsole also mean this shoe is purpose-built for running, but does not perform well in cross-training scenarios. The knit upper is lightweight and comfortable, but our tester found the tongue to be strangely short. This was most evident when switching between shoes for head-to-head -head testing, and while it didn't noticeably affect performance, it required tighter lacing than other shoes on this list. Number two, Brooks Glycerin 20 GTs. Best supportive running shoe. For those familiar with the Brooks Transcend, the Glycerin 20 GT $160 is its replacement. Brooks rebranded its entire support line as GTS models, which is short for go to support. In the past, supportive shoes had a firmer piece of foam or post along the medial side of the shoe to support pronation. This would in almost every case result in a firm underfoot ride. By placing two firm pieces of foam on either side of the heel, Brooks is able to less invasively reduce excess inward and outward rolling of the foot while offering a softer ride more typically found in neutral shoes. The softness comes from a new nitrogen-infused DNA Loft Via 3 midsole, Brooks softest cushioning foam. The updated midsole yields a more responsive and stable underfoot experience versus the Glycerin 19 GTs. These shoes are a workhorse too. 
They're capable of maintaining form longer than most shoes. Yet, like most workhorse shoes, the Glyron 20 GTs is fairly heavy. At 10.5 ounces and 9.5 ounces, a oh will. You might want a lighter shoe for speed work and races, or for those runners who require a supportive shoe, but are tired of the firm persona of most supportive models. Look no further. The Brooks Glycarin 20 GTs will feel like a slice of heaven while still giving you the support you need. Number one, A6 Gel Nimbus 25 Light Shell. Best neutral running shoe if you're looking for an everyday neutral trainer to clock miles and get in the occasional up-tempo session, the A6 Gel Nimbus 25 Light Show $170 is as good as they get. The updated Nimbus 25 features a full-length single-density FF Blast plus Eco Cushioning and their new Purigal technology for maximum comfort and cushioning during any type of run. Testers found the cushioning level not too soft, but not too firm thus hitting a sweet spot of just the right balance between the two. Typically with this much foam underfoot, you lose some sensitivity, but not with the Nimbus Elite 3. Our testers found the shoe to be fairly flexible, moving well with the feet and allowing them to react. Coming in at 10.3 ounces for men and 9.1 ounces for women, it's surprisingly lightweight for such a cushioned and well-padded everyday trainer. While the steep Tim heel drop may not be for everyone particularly forefoot runners, the steep ramp provides added support under your heel as you start to fatigue. While aesthetics doesn't affect technical performance, this is certainly one sharp looking trainer. The slightly oversized but sculpted midsole looks fantastic. And although white isn't my favorite color for running shoes, ASICs somehow put together a brilliant all-white shoe. Everyday neutral running shoes are the most exciting type of running shoes. They need to fit well and feel comfortable across a wide range of paces and distances and for the most part disappear when you wear them. No other trainer we tested hit these marks better than the ASICs Gel Nimbus 25 Light Show. As one tester noted, this shoe will not disappoint those runners looking for a conventional, moderately higher drop, max cushion trainer. So this was today's video about top five best running shoes. If you benefit from the video, then subscribe and stay with us.